Welcome to the second modify video on a single enclosure design for the LOUS Bridge Signature and DG1 Signature. In the last video, I covered listening tests of the alloy combination with both a low noise and near power supply and a lithium ion battery pack. I concluded that the sound quality from using batteries was noticeably better. But I also wanted to have a means powered option for less critical listening. So I decided to incorporate both options in a single integrated enclosure along with the two alloy boards. As I've mentioned before, I don't like the general Raspberry Pi scene of lots of little boxes with cables to plug and unplug. This video is going to concentrate on the design stage of that box. Here we go. By the way, I'm calling this box the Siggy. To be honest, I quite like the simplicity of the transparent acrylic case from Allo. But you can only fit a Raspberry Pi and the Digi-One signature in it. There's no space for an internal power supply or batteries. In any case, it just wouldn't look right in a high-end system. For the US bridge signature, I will offer an aluminium enclosure. This looks better, but it still has a sense of a basic computer product about it, rather than a high-end audio component. The last few years, I've been occasionally tinkering with a music streamer build based around a generic Chinese DAC uh, and an ITX computer board. This is housed in an old Marantz CD player. It works, and I had improved it from stock with some mods, but I never completed it because the sound quality, although adequate for mid-fi applications, can never come close to the quality I had from my main system sources. It was when I was looking around for an alternative approach that I stumbled across and heard good things about Allo. Combining these two signature products with a good external DAC turned out to be a great source sonically. Now, I could upcycle any old hi-fi component to fit the Allo board set with power options of my choosing. But I thought, why not design something a little different? I also felt, given the growing popularity of these boards, that others may also be interested in a solution uh, with better aesthetics. About three years ago, I did a cosmetic upgrade to my DIY preamp using a high-quality matte finish acrylic, which I laser cut and engraved. That worked very well. So with that experience and the inspiration just mentioned, I put pencil to paper initially to sketch out potential solutions. I considered a full width unit to match my, the preamp. In the end, I settled on a half width chassis design, so 215 millimeters wide, uh, eight, about eight and a half inches. With some detailed measurements and referencing data sheets, I took my sketches and started building a 3D model of the enclosure. A model allows you to get a good idea of the finished article, hone your design and avoid wasting materials. I used the FreeCAD parametric modeler uh, because it's free uh, and I've used it before. Uh, that said, uh, I did have to bring myself up to speed with it again, but it didn't take long. You could draw out the various parts using a simple 2D CAD package like LibreCAD or a vector graphics tool like Inkscape. The 3D modeler allows you to see how all your parts will fit together though. I'll put links in the description below for each of these packages. They're available for multiple platforms, including Windows, Linux, and Mac. There are many more available, but these are the ones I typically use. There are commercial software package alternatives to these open source ones available, uh, but they can be costly, uh, particularly for modeling. I don't think the average DIYer or small business could stump up the license cost for SolidWorks or PTC Creo, for example. They may not be as polished, but there are some perfectly adequate open source packages these days. Getting back to the point, I envisage the, the Siggy to have the build simplicity of the basic Allo acrylic case, but with the looks of a high-end audio component. The matte acrylic I'd used before uh, has a great understated smooth texture. So this was going to be my material of choice. If you're concerned over EMC, uh, electromagnetic noise ingress or egress, um, you can line the inside with a thin aluminium foil and ground it. That's aluminum for my American friend. That said, there's no reason why the same design couldn't be cut from aluminium sheet by CNC, laser or water jet cutter. Of course, that would cost more uh, and I'm not sure it matches the concept. I'm going for. So here's one I prepared earlier. I give you the 
Siggy. Let's take a look around. It's useful to have parts in different colours to see how they interact as you're building the model. Let's give it the black finish. There, that looks more like the final article. On the back, in the rear we have all the connectors exposed. Uh, on the US bridge. So we've got holes here for the dirty power, HDMI or USB DAC and Ethernet. And then holes up above for the Digi-One signatures to SP diff outputs, the coax, coaxial on RCA and on BNC connectors. We gave these cutouts reasonable tolerance, which should allow for any small variation in manufacturing of the PCBs. Over on the right, here there is a cutout for an IC mains power inlet. I chose that because in my case I was fitting a linear power supply internally. There's no reason not to produce rear panels with alternate clean power input cutouts. Let's open it up. So spin it around. Take the lid off. Ta da! You can see the US bridge mounted here. On the right, let's uh, spin it around to get a top view. There we go. USB bridge there mounted on the right against the back panel, obviously for the connectors. I didn't want ugly USB connectors on the front in any event. The likely use here is for a Wi-Fi dongle. These would fit in around here on the board. Uh, and the Wi-Fi dongle would be fine housed inside the acrylic box. That said, I prefer wired connections where possible. So that gives us space for the battery compartment and the linear power supply at the front. On top of the US bridge here is the dirty card board of the pair that is the Digi-One signature and the clean board for that is on the top. All the rear panel cutouts line up with the positions on the boards, but as I said, I've given them a generous tolerance just in case. Power supply on the left. This is sized for my prototype board, but if I were to produce this as a DIY module, I'd design a neater single printed circuit board to fit in here, and that would probably be smaller. There are any number of low noise linear power supplies for audio on the market, so I'm not sure it's worth the effort for me to do that. All of themselves have the shanty. Then again, it is another box. An IEC inlet with an integral EMC filter is fitted to the back panel. Actually, this cutout out here is specific for the Shorter GR4 which I had in stock and if I was refining this design for production I'd probably change this to be more generic. Here we have a trial transformer providing the low voltage AC supply to the power supply board here. The large primary smoothing cap, fuse holder etc shown here these are drawn to be sure of sizing and fitting inside the box. Along the back of the power supply is this heat sink made of aluminium. With that drawn in place, it allows, allows me to position the air vents underneath to allow adequate flow over that heat sink. There are also air entry points over by the US bridge. You can see them in the highlighted base there. 
and the top panel has air vents for um, the power supply and over the processor. These are the parts which generate most heat, but in reality it runs quite cool, so the vents are perhaps excessive. Let's take the lid off again. This is the battery compartment here at the right hand side of the front, internal separators, and then there's a cover here which will attach to the battery pack itself. This will then slide in and out to allow the batteries to be changed. I've designed in a slot, if you can look at the bottom of the panel of the cover, to allow a pool tab to be fitted for that operation. I chose mortise and tenon joints to allow everything to slot together easily. At this point I've thought of glue or pillars with screws at the four corners to hold everything together, hence the four, one, two, three, four corner holes top and bottom. For a fixing free finish, the front panel uh, was to be glued in place. That's the design of the Siggy covered. In the next video, I'll talk about producing the parts. Thanks for watching. If you find this useful or enjoyed it, uh, please click the thumbs up. Um, and if this is the sort of thing that interests you, you maybe like my more realistic value led approach to high end audio, or you're interested in anything audiophile related uh, or related to hi fi upgrades and upcycling, uh, please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell to be kept up to date as I post new content. Meanwhile, stay safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.